Okay, you guys, so uh, this is our beginner to our advanced basics class. This is where we fill the gaps of what you need between a really advanced basic class, which we do all the time because we're not playing around. Um, and so we have a lot of patterns on our syllabus for our beginner class, but it doesn't quite prepare you for our intermediate slash advanced class. So we created this class between for those items and elements that you need to prepare you better for that class. So what we did tonight was talked about a starter step because most often in the basic class, we will start an open or I will have you do a closed sugar push with there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what most of the higher level of dancers are doing. Also express that when we do a starter step, a lot of times we're really, really confusing the lady. It's one of the most confusing parts of the dance for her because every dude's doing something that she doesn't understand and freaking out. And so I would just really like it if you would convey your message to her better. One of the most common starter steps we do to get acclimated to the music is just kind of chilling and doing a touch step. If you're gonna start that with your left foot leaders, make sure that you're not going step, touch, step, touch, because that doesn't work out when you come out. It always feels weird. So we don't do step touches. What we do are touch steps, and that's all dances. We don't go step, touch, we go touch, step, right? So I'm gonna bring my feet together, feet are apart. When I do that, my body is shifting over to my right, which makes her wanna to shift to her left. So I'm taking her weight off of her right foot and she does a touch with me, that's one two to the other side, three, four. I go five, she thinks I'm gonna do this the whole song until I step towards her. And when I step towards her, she's like, whoa, 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 this, I, I resemble this. This is uh, what I normally do going into an anchor. Now she steps backward and I let my body turn to the left a little bit and I can just give her an anchor. So I could just give her a normal anchor there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I turn my body to the left to give her a little bit more rope on this side can give her just a regular anchor and then we're off for the walk walk down the slot what we did tonight our focus tonight were rock and goes so we went one two three four five six and i stabbed the ground in front of me and back up so i turned what would normally be an anchor into a rock and go anchor now what'll happen is i'll stab the ground in front of me i'll replace and then i'm going to back off the slot she's going to step between my feet because she doesn't need to worry about getting around my foot yet so that's seven and eight. Now that I have her prepped, I'll do a drop triple, pick up that hand and give her would be what would be a normal spinning left side pass, but it's coming off of that rock and go starter step. The other side of that looks like this. So if we went one, two, three, four, five step towards her, stab the ground, back up seven and eight, I pick up that hand nine and 10, 11 and 12. After that, we did a right hand sugar push. One, two, that's just what we call a sugar push where we're holding on with the right hand. Became very popular a few years ago. We were like, we can do stuff with this hand. And so it's just really a sugar push holding on. Anytime that I'm enclosed or holding on to the lady's left side, I like to be more forgiving. So you'll notice that every time that I'm holding that hand, again, I turn my body to the diagonal like I was enclosed. So Liz's left hip can, Liz's left hip can stay back because otherwise if I'm like this, she feels cheated like she can't step back and anchor. So I just like to give her that side of me a little bit so she gets to stay back. We could certainly do a normal anchor there. We turn that into the same stab the ground and back up for a rock and go. One, two, three, and four stab the ground and prep her to 90 across the slot and then give her a free spin off of that lead. So that's a right hand sugar push, one, two, three and four strap the ground, five and prepper, six spinner, seven and eight and out. And the last pattern that we did was a whip pattern where we stayed enclosed. And when we stay enclosed, I'm gonna give her a rock and go at the end of it. We go one flipper, two, three and four. And instead of just sideways on the five and straddle on the six like I normally do, which you could do, one, two, three and four, five, six. But now it feels weird to give her that extra rope on that side. I prefer to do an about face off of my four. One, two, three, and four. So instead of facing the camera here, I'm gonna make a half turn, which places both of my feet outside my partner, which is called outside partner. That's five. I go with her on count six, and now I'm gonna do what we did on our starter step, stab the ground and back up. But this time, both of my feet are outside of her because I was already in that orientation. So I go seven and eight, pick that up, nine and 10, 11 and 12. If we do that this way, you can see that a little better. So we go one flipper, two, three, and four, about face puts me outside of her. Six, stab the ground, seven, and eight up, 
triple step and triple step. So from the top, we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12, right hand sugar push, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10, and a whip, two, three and four, about face, five, six, seven and eight, up, nine and 10, 11 and 12. And that's what we did in class. Thank you, Liz. Thank y'all for watching. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, share this with everybody. Thank y'all so much for being here. Love you. Mean it. <laughs>